As you guys might be able to tell, today's video is going to be a little bit different than what we're normally doing. We're not going to be walking through the neighborhoods today, guys. It is pouring rain. We got Hurricane Nicole making its way on its way to Florida, and we're not going to spend too much time on the hurricane. Uh, Miami is not going to feel a huge impact from this. We're getting a ton of rain today. The wind has been pretty mild so far. They think that worst of it we're going to get later tonight, probably uh, around 1 o'clock in the morning on uh, Thursday early morning, I guess you could say, but Wednesday night for me. And we're, I'm shooting this on Wednesday. By tomorrow, Thursday, when I make the next video, guys, most of this should be cleared up already. But uh, we're actually at the top of the Lincoln Road parking garage over here. Got the movie theater down there. And you can see Lincoln Road down there in the distance and all the rain coming down. So I'm just going to walk back and forth up here to give you guys somewhat of a view. So if you respect the hustle in this video, out here in the pouring rain, in the parking garage, I normally don't ask for this, but make sure you guys like this video because it took a lot of effort to make this one, okay? Oh, by the way, how do you guys like my t-shirt? A friend of mine, Ramsey, he gave me this shirt. I thought it was hilarious. Local celebrity. <laughs> so I wanted to start this video with a pretty astonishing statistic, guys. There was a report that came out today that says that mortgage payments right now are 77% higher than they were a year ago, which is unbelievable. And right now, in order for the mortgage payments to go back to what they were just one year ago, home prices need to fall 45%. 45% home prices need to come down in order to match the payments of a year ago, okay? And if mortgage rates go up another 1% from where they're at now, they'll have to come down by 50%. That is huge. In order for prices to come down 50%, a lot of people would say that's never going to happen. I would even be skeptical to see if that's going to happen, guys. I mean, anything's possible, but you know, I don't know if it's realistic to expect prices to come down that much, but it's possible because if the Fed does not pump the brakes on these interest rate hikes and you know, the inventory continues to sit for a pro prolonged period of time, as well as the economy continues to get worse. If there's a lot of these layoffs that continue to happen, like we've been talking about, and inflation just keeps chewing up more of people's budgets, then I do think it is possible. But this is over probably the next few years. This isn't something that's going to happen by 2023. It's not like 2023 is going to come and then all of a sudden we got you know, 50% cheaper homes. It's not gonna be like that. If it does happen, probably like 2025 at the earliest is my guess. So, you know, it happens over time. Could it happen faster? Sure. Could it just come down by 20% and go back up? Absolutely. Anything is possible. So, you guys can start feeling the, the wind here when I walk over this way. So, hopefully it's not gonna be too annoying. My microphone should be able to cut through. A funny statement from an economist. He says that the only way I see mortgage rates stopping their upward trajectory is if the economy dives into a severe recession. So we know that the Fed will most likely pivot at some point, but it's probably not going to be until they break something in the economy, like we talked about before. And you know, by then the damage has already been done, so it doesn't really matter anymore. So all we can really do, because the data lags behind, you know, every time we look at the real estate data, we're looking at last month's data. And the, the next month's data doesn't come in until the month after and so on and so forth. So we just have to keep an eye on the market month over month like we've been doing so far. And now month over month prices are falling every single month now and i expect that trend to continue because the interest rates are just going to keep going up guys so it'll be interesting to watch that's for sure whether or not we'll see home prices come down 50 percent in the future i think everyone would be super happy about that because it would allow you know current homeowners to be able to move again they wouldn't feel locked in by their current house even though they'd be able to sell for way less but you know it just kind of would open up the market again whereas right now everything is a mexican standoff you know you have sellers that don't want to sell because they got low rates and they also even if they want to move there's nowhere to go because everything's too expensive and their mortgage payments also going to be going up significantly so it makes no sense to move and then you got buyers saying i can't afford it i'm not going to buy so at some point something's going to have to give and right now what we're seeing that's giving 
by month by month are the prices guys we talked about that in yesterday's video the prices are going down every single month right now now here's a funny thing that I came across when I was putting together today's video there was a little uh, coaching article from Tom Ferry he's like a big uh, real estate big wig he runs like a real estate agent coaching program teaches real estate agents how to sell real estate especially in tough times like this and it was just pretty funny guys I want to share this with you one of the points they talked about in there was how to handle certain objections and one of the biggest objections that most real estate agents are going to come across right now is uh, clients that say well I want to wait and see what the market's going to do which is what most smart home buyers are doing right now especially if you watch my channel and here is the response that Mr. Tom Ferry says that real estate agents should have to potential clients. So let me know what you guys think about this. He says that your job is not to convince them why the market is great. Your job is to show them the data and help them make an educated decision based on their goals. And here are two separate approaches. So that sounds a lot like what we do on this channel, right? We go over the data just like we did in yesterday's video and then you guys make the decision for yourself. Okay? So far so good. All right. So the first option is you tell them in certain price ranges there's still competition for homes due to low inventory and low interest rates. Notice how they use the word low interest rates. Once we get through the next few months there will likely be more competition and who knows what interest rates will be. Are you willing to take that risk? What's the cost of staying put? Let's look at the available inventory this week and see if there's anything I can show you. This is hilarious guys. Honestly, I think if a real estate agent says this to you right now, it just screams of desperation and that's basically someone trying to convince you that right now is a good time to buy and that somehow in a few months from now, it's going to be more competitive. What? H how is it going to be more competitive guys? At let's answer this question first before we move on to the next one. How is the housing market going to become more competitive in an environment where more listings are being added every single month that are not selling because inventory is not moving and interest rates are rising and inflation is taking huge chunks out of people's monthly budgets. Tell me how competition is going to go up guys. It's not. In fact in the coming months it's probably just going to continue to get easier to buy with less and less competition because people cannot afford to buy. That's the, the bottom line. And if you can, in a few months from now, you're going to be facing like practically no competition. There already is hardly any competition out there. So this whole thing is a complete lie. If your real estate agent says this to you, you should probably find a new agent that is more realistic with what's going on. And here's the second thing they, that Tom Ferry says to tell your clients. He says, I can appreciate where you're coming from. I'm not here to sell you the idea of buying or selling because there's a lot of uncertainty right now. What I want to tell you is that I have some real data to share with you to explain why I think there's a great opportunity. Here's where we stand. Then show the client month over month and year over year statistics for your market. We just looked at that stuff yesterday guys in yesterday's video. If you missed it, go check it out. It was the previous video from the one you're watching right now on my channel and we went through the data in that video in detail. Okay? What does it show? It shows home prices are falling off a cliff. In fact, that was the title of the video because it's actually happening. It's not clickbait. I, I showed you guys exactly what's happening and home prices are falling off a cliff, especially over the last few months. So I don't know how any real estate agent is going to show one of their clients this data and convince them that now's a good time to buy. But if you're selling, sure, I think you could still convince the client, you know, home prices are still quite a bit higher than they were just a few years ago. So yeah, for the seller, does it still make sense? Absolutely. But at the same time, good luck finding a buyer because they basically disappeared. So that's really the real issue that we're facing right now. I just got <laughs> rainwater right on my face and glasses. Check this out, guys. I don't know if you can see that in the distance. That's supposed to be downtown Miami out there, way over there. But there's so much rain, you can't even see it. This storm is dropping a ton of rain. Surprisingly, the streets haven't gotten nearly as flooded as uh, 
we thought they were going to be so far. But like I said, by tomorrow, most of this should be gone. It's a pretty fast moving storm, luckily. The view up here is awesome, isn't it? Now, if you guys actually want some helpful information, I want to give you a quick tip. If you're someone who bought any type of property this year and you're just now getting your property tax bill, a lot of people don't know this, but one thing that you can do is you can get a reproration for property taxes. And basically how this works is when you buy the property, most likely the previous owner was paying a much lower property tax bill than what you're gonna be paying for this year because every time you buy a new property, the bill goes up because the property gets reassessed, okay? And since I am in this situation this year as well, I'm gonna give you my own personal example. So when I bought my condo in February this year, the property tax bill was 51.57 for the year. And now the new bill is 87.42. Talking $8,742, guys. And uh, that's with the early payment discount, okay? So now what needs to happen is the amount that I was credited at closing from the seller to pay the property tax bill is insufficient to cover their portion of ownership. So the, the previous owner needs to pay the property taxes for the time they own the property. And in my case, that would be January 1st through the middle of February when we close, okay? And so they have about a month and a half of property taxes to pay us, which they gave us at closing. But since the bill for this year went up, they now owe us an additional $547, which I'm going to try to claim uh, this week from the previous owner. So a lot of people don't know about this, and I don't know if $547 sounds like a lot to you, but considering the fact that a lot of people don't even have that much to cover an emergency, I think it's pretty significant. So if you bought property this year, make sure you go ahead and try to get that reproration, guys. Now, the biggest downside to this is that it's not a whole lot of money, but it is something. And at the end of the day, if the previous owner refuses to pay it to you, then your only recourse is going to be suing in small claims court, and it's not gonna be worth it. That's the truth. So hopefully, the previous owner will do, will do the right thing. And, um, you know, this is in the sale contract, at least in Florida it is. I can't speak for all 50 states, but I'm sure a lot of states have a similar clause in their real estate contracts that allow you to get a reproration of property taxes in the situation like this. So make sure you go ahead and get that. Get your extra 500, 400, 300 dollars, whatever it is. Every little bit helps right now. The next thing is a new story on rent control. There is a coalition out there that's going to be meeting with the Biden administration on November 14th, and they want President Biden to sign an executive order. And basically what this executive order will do is it's supposed to be a big middle finger to corporate landlords and any landlords gouging families that can't afford these massive increases in rent right now. And it will cap annual rent increases at 3% or one and a half times the rate of inflation, whichever is lower, and apply the rule to government-backed mortgages, specifically those guaranteed by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. So let me know what you guys think about that. Um, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of people that'd be happy if Biden does this, and a lot of people are gonna be super pissed off if Biden does this, so we'll see. It's gonna be interesting to see after this meeting if he's gonna do something like that we'll find out soon enough that's already uh, next week so now here look we got the same view again and since the rain is slowing down a little bit it comes in waves like that now you can see downtown Miami out that way but I'm doing the video in the parking garage guys because I couldn't think of anywhere else to go where I could stay somewhat dry with my equipment and uh, give you guys somewhat of a cool view. I still thought this would be better than sitting at home in my office doing a live stream. You know, maybe some of you would like it, but I enjoy getting out here as well. So uh, hopefully you're enjoying the video. Now, one of my viewers, DJ, he sent me an article yesterday about how rents are going down across the country, except for throughout most of Florida, which is super interesting, guys, because people are always asking me, you guys are always asking me in the comments of the videos, what I think is gonna happen in certain areas of Florida, 
where do I think the Miami market is going? And the truth is, it's such a unique area when it comes to um, you know what's happening with our housing markets here that it's very difficult to predict. When we see things like rent prices still going up in Tampa, for example, in September alone, it went up slightly, you know, like almost a quarter of a point, which is not that much, guys. But the fact is, it's still going up and it's not just there you know miami's went up almost half a point in september so rents are still inching up just a little by little here in florida when a lot of other places across the country rent is going down as a local as someone who's been doing real estate here for 14 years i think it all just comes down to the unbelievable desirability for people to live in florida and that's what's really driving this that along with the fact that we have a ton of empty homes here there are so many second homes in florida that sit vacant i think we have more vacant homes here in florida than any other state in the country uh, we talked about that a few months ago and the stats on that are just staggering and when you combine a lot of empty homes with um, a huge demand for people that want to be here, it's gonna drive up prices, guys. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's continuing to go up, even in an environment when prices are going down almost everywhere else. So that's the first thing. And according to this article, the only areas in Florida that have seen slight dips in rental prices recently have been Orlando, Jacksonville, and Lakeland. And we're all talking like less than half a point, guys. It's basically negligible how much has been going down. Not really enough for it to matter, but it's worth mentioning because maybe in those areas, if you're a tenant, you might start being able to get a little more bargaining power when it comes to leasing. But just like the housing market, when we're talking about uh, buying, you know, the best deals are yet to come. And, you know, only now things are beginning to make a turn and prices are starting to go down. So we're not at a point where, you know, there's plentiful good deals anymore. That's just not the case yet. It's coming, but we're not there yet. The wind's really starting to pick up out here. I'm sure you guys can hear that. And to kind of back up the story we were just talking about with the rents, another interesting dynamic with Florida that makes it uh, kind of unique from other states is that two out of three Florida mortgage holders right now have over 50% equity in their homes, which is pretty high. And so what this comes down to is 63% of Florida homeowners have really high equity, over 50%, versus the nationwide average is only about 48.5%. So that's significantly higher. And like I said, it kind of makes Florida unique because Florida attracts all kinds of money, guys. We get buyers from all over the world here, which of course other states do too, especially places like New York and California. But Florida has been the poster child for you know international investors, especially over the last few years. And combine that with a bunch of Americans moving to Florida during the pandemic, it creates this type of situation where we had this huge run up in prices. People are able to put large down payments on their homes here because they come from places of money. And that doesn't even include the people that pay cash. We're talking about only people that have mortgages, guys. So, you know, almost 70% of people that have mortgages in Florida have over 50% equity. And so I think that's, that's a huge clue as to where the Florida market might go in the future. Because even though we're seeing this housing crash starting to begin, we're not gonna see the big foreclosure wave in Florida like we saw last time, most likely because of these equity stats. I think we will see prices go down, but you're not gonna see the foreclosure wave in Florida that we saw back in 2008 because it was so easy for anyone to get a loan back then. And now that there's so many equity rich homeowners here in Florida, it's going to help keep uh, prices propped up here most likely by the people that just don't need to sell. And I think that's gonna make Florida kind of unique during this housing crash. And it's not gonna go down quite as hard as some other states. I could be wrong, but based on these equity stats, it looks like that's kind of the situation we're facing right now. However, one thing that could change all that, and not just in Florida, but nationwide, is the fact that home equity lines of credit that were issued in the second quarter of 2022 went up 43% year over year, guys. And this is at a time when interest rates 
were pretty high still. In the middle of this year, interest rates were already in the sixes. And with the HELOC loans, it's adjustable. And as rates continue to go up, those HELOC payments are gonna to continue to go up as well. And when you have that many people deciding to tap into the home equity lines of credit, that could be the crux this time around. Maybe we won't have the foreclosure wave. We might have a combination of poor economic conditions where it makes it difficult for people to pay for their everyday lives. And they have this house payment combined with the fact now they have this HELOC loan and who knows what else. And all it takes is one disaster, you know, a few paychecks away from not being able to pay. And that could be the thing that brings the ship down this time around rather than a wave of foreclosures. But it's kind of the same thing because at the end of the day, it's someone who took a loan that they can no longer pay back and the HELOC lender does have the opportunity to foreclose. So the foreclosure wave that could potentially come will just come from a different angle this time, essentially, if this happens. And one other thing I wanted to mention is we talk sometimes about the massive wealth transfers that are going on right now with this um, huge recession that we're just starting to enter, guys. And a perfect example of this just came up today. And thank you, Chris, for sending me this story on Instagram. And it says in this story that the CEO of FTX, Sam Bankman, he was worth $16 billion this earlier this week, guys. Now he's only worth $1 billion. So this guy lost $15 billion worth of net worth in just one week. Now, obviously, he's still filthy rich. You know, when you still have a billion dollars, that's more, more money than anyone could ever need in their lifetime. So he'll be okay. But because crypto is down, just like everything else is right now, every other asset is down, including all types of crypto. And when you have such a large portion of your net worth wrapped up in companies that sell crypto and trade crypto and in the crypto itself, this is basically showing you guys just how fast somebody can basically lose everything when you are tied to these very volatile assets like that. So it's a good lesson for everyone to learn that if you are into crypto somehow and you know you try to win big, just keep in mind that you can also lose big too, guys. And this guy from FTX is the perfect example of that right now. So you gotta be careful, you know, that's why I like more stable things, you know, like we talked about before, silver and gold, real estate, stuff that tends to hold its value much better, even during uh, big downturns like this. Will it lose some value? Absolutely, but nowhere near losing 94% of your fortune basically overnight. So if you guys enjoyed this video and you respect the hustle, me on top of this roof, showing you guys Miami from the rooftop, make sure to like the video guys, subscribe to the channel, use the bell notification in order to receive all of my newest uploads. And hopefully I'll be back with you tomorrow with a little bit sunnier video, if not, at least not so much wind and rain. And if you don't wanna wait for my next video tomorrow, check out this one on the screen right over here, and I'll see you in the next one.